And then that's just getting into the... Tra but you do have a higher trauma modifier still. You have a plus 10 to it, so there's that. Yeah. But, you know, good luck. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, as you, uh, as you settle down, you are keenly aware of how many people aren't there. Especially because many of them... You wouldn't say it's a state of disarray, but they've personalized their effects as best they can. And you realize if they're not, if they haven't come back to recover these, chances are they're never going to come back to recover them. Meanwhile, outside the door, uh, you can hear some pretty heated conversation. Uh, going on outside, namely, uh, was, Sir, with respect, I received the notification as soon as I went in there. He doesn't have a foci, and we left. We sealed it up. Standard protocols. I, I don't know. I don't know why the psyker wasn't immediately reported for not having a foci. That's not my job, sir. Mm. I understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. we don't have anyone on detail. We only have... We only have the Sisters of Battle. I think that should be enough for one. one so okay, I'll be quiet, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and as these snippets of conversations are going on, you realize that uh, basically everyone in your chain of command is inside of the medic tent getting treated for their many ridiculously ghastly wounds. Effectively leaving no one to vouch for good old Psyker Scipio. Oh yeah, Sergeant Jones is a little bit fucked up right now. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll be remarkable if he keeps his arm. He can get a power claw now. <laughs> he was good enough to go talk to Alexander, and then he's like, "All right, well, I have like four drops of blood left. Time for me to go turn myself in." Right, and I'm more or less stuck in bed. Moving from this position is not a good idea. I mean, you can always chance it. I mean... Chance it, fall over, just break my neck. Yeah, I got myself before they got me. <laughs> there you go. And uh, as this is going on, you watch as a handful of the priests <clears throat> show up before eventually uh, you can hear the session going on. It's like, we don't know where his handler is, but he was... <sighs> he was at the forward point with the forlorn hope, so I imagine he didn't make it. One of the one of the uh, chaplains goes. Suffer not a witch to live. We'll go see what's happening. In the meantime, if we don't come back out, burn the place down. And then uh, he looks over at the sister of battle, and he hands her a little piece of paper, and uh, he strides into the tent. You guys watch as a very large chat. Actually, that's Jort. <laughs> wrong guy. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong guy. A very large Jort walks in. Yes, the largest of Jorts decides to walk in. As soon as I can click this, this map is freaking messy. You. you can see he has a large Warhammer in his hands, but more than that, he has a box of holy seals. And he sort of walks forward. He has the sledgehammer over one shoulder and he has the seal in his hand as he marches forward and begins chanting in high gothic, which is not a language any of you speak, I believe. Uh, nope. Actually, I wonder if I do. I think Psychers might actually get it. Ooh! Nope, nope, just low gothic. I get a yeah. bunch of knowledge, that's it. Yeah, and as as he approaches, you watch every, basically every five steps or so, he pauses and he puts a seal on the ground and he produces another seal and he marches forward and he puts another seal. Uh, Bigsby, as he gets to your bed, he looks at you and he places a seal right on your forehead and he blesses it. And then he turns and he looks at the psyker. He goes, Scipio, 
you pitiful thing. Are you still with us? Are I yet live. Are you There's still one thing you? I have not sacrificed today. If only you had. Then at least we could be saved this unnecessary, well, this unnecessary complication to our daily lives. I heard you outside. It's rather quiet in here. I want you to know Sergeant Jones does still live. His injuries weren't too severe. Your mind games won't work on me, Psycho. I'm protected by the Emperor himself, represented in the many seals I carry and wear and adorn. And he just pulls open his chest, and you can see that he actually has just scarred into his body holy symbols and sigils. There's no deception here, and if your sigils are so protective, ask him over there. And I'll just, like, raise my hand, like, the bare inch to point to Big V. Big V has a seal same blast squad, same sergeant. He looks over at Big V and he goes, <clears throat> Does Sergeant Jones yet live private? And he's still completely bare chested, by the way. Just magnificent, glistening pectorals. <laughs> so no, you when can you... I do it, it's a crime, but when he does it, <laughs> you get the feeling that he does this a lot. <laughs> Especially because he didn't tear it. These are like button like little metal class they're like breakaway but mm -hmm. far be it from you to uh question the means and the methods of the ecclesiarchy of course but he looks over at bigsby and goes private bigsby you diminutive thing does your sergeant let let live and if so does he hold your psyker's foci which sergeant are we talking about here Sergeant, sergeant Jones. Jones. I want to answer oh, so many so sergeants big, already. What does Bigby know about Sergeant Jones at the moment? Sorry about my bad memory. No worries. Uh, he was basically assigned to you during the beginnings of that next mission. Uh, he helped you shoot a number of things, actually. He helped you protect the tank. He helped you advance through the enemy territory, and he helped you hold the line. Am I missing anything? I'm just wondering if he's still alive or not. Oh yeah, he's he's very much alive. Uh, he is not in good shape, and he hasn't been for some time, but he is alive. And I don't think Bigby would know if he holds the focus, so he would just say he might. If you were to quote me on that, I would say he might not. I'm not a commissar. You can be truthful. So I long as you're truthful. That's not helpful, but it's honest. So here's the predicament we find ourselves in, Scipio. You are a conduit for the very forces of chaos that threaten to overwhelm the, well, the walls and the protection that we have erected for mankind at all moments of our life, at any point, for any reason. You are a walking beacon that pulls every evil thing towards it. And now you have lost one of your key means of controlling that chaos that maleficent maleficent and maleficarum so why I either end you here and now or we find your foci but we can't leave you alone so and he looks over at uh, Bigsby and he looks at everybody else in the room I'm going to ask Sister Meredith to go find your Sergeant Jones and return with your foci. And if not, well, then you're not going to last here for much longer. And uh, he hits a little communicator in his collar, and he tells, sorry, uh, tells the Sister of Battle, Sister Meredith, to go retrieve Sergeant Jones. And while that is happening, would anybody else like to do anything? With him staring me down, I don't think so. I think the best Scipio can hope for is that the sergeant remembers what the focus looks like and that there are more of them in Scipio's tent with the rest of the game board. <laughs> now, so, 
as far as I'm aware, a side focus is probably like a specific thing with specific properties, but as long as it matches the shape and appearance, maybe it'll trick him. Who knows? Technically, it is specific to you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, have you seen, what's that movie where they go into people's dreams multiple yeah, times? Yeah, Memento, yeah. Inception, actually. Right, so it's something Inception. that I've spent time with. It's not a specific anything else. So this guy right. actually might not have any idea. I'm really not sure, because I don't know that part of the lore. I suppose we'll find out when we roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if Big B can move, he's going to try to hide the uh, flint lock. It's a pistol, but it's still, like, about this big. Where would you like to hide it? Under the pillow. All right. You have now become a Texan as you put your flintlock pistol <laughs> under your pillow. Yeah. Technically, if this didn't happen to me, you wouldn't have the chance to like hide all your cool stuff. <laughs> so while that's going on, Jort, would you like to do anything else as you are now stabilized? Eventually, the medic comes back in, and, and you can see he's pale in the face, and he sits down, and he pours himself a glass of water. He goes, so, uh, I found the other medic, or what's left of her. That's, that's not good. She was supposed to relieve me 20 minutes ago. 16-hour shifts. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's great. Shoot all the medics. It's not like we're drowning in fucking bodies right now. <laughs> you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> fine. Uh, I guess I'll play the guitar. All right. I love it. Do you, uh, uh, are you going to try and play the same song? Hell no. I'm going to play something. I'm going to play my classic uh, music from whatever fucking planet we came from. <laughs> Freebird. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, there is no, <laughs> there, there is no guitar skill. Oddly enough. Uh, so it'll just be a trade skill for which you are not trained. <laughs> so, but you've heard it a number of times. And you're feeling pretty confident. So, you know, just give me a roll. Trade. And base this off of... I don't even know what this would be. Agility, I'm I suppose. Gonna, I'm going to be doing the uh, Gene Simmons tongue out and everything. Just... Negative 8.4. You, uh, <laughs> as soon as you, you pick up the guitar to pass the time, and as soon as you do, you, uh, go, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I know how this works. Ping! And just, like, three of the strings just snap immediately. <gasps> well. Set it down. This wasn't a good guitar. <laughs> you I'm see used every to a banjo anyway. <laughs> Yeah, rips the stitches. <laughs> Leads out on the ground. <laughs> do I jump off of like the amp? <laughs> All right. So, and you do not attempt to assist uh, Scipio in any way. You attempt to play guitar and break the only guitar on post belonging to the good old Private York, who I'm sure will be happy to see it in this current state. So, <laughs> as you proceed to just destroy everything in the room, uh. You, you watch as the medics just sort of stands up and we're only awareness real quick. Oh, yeah. As you're trying to figure out how to like tie the guitar strings back together, you just watch as the medic just sort of like shaking his head. You can see there's deep bags under his eyes and he just sort of walks into the back. He takes a blanket and he wraps it over himself and he just walks into the back by the bathroom. He goes, fuck this. Fuck all of it. I'm going to bed. He just goes into the back room, shuts the door. No, they take all your weapons when you're in post. So, while this is going on, Sergeant Jones, uh, in the middle of a surgery, we're going to see uh, just how good the good sergeant heals up to see whether or not he's going to be able to help you. Wish We're looking at luck. Because I believe he was at critical. What was he at critical four? I believe. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but it was not good. Yeah, he, he was banged up. 
So, critical force, that's a negative 40 to the roll, right? Uh, I believe so. We were just covering that a moment ago. And that's for long-term care. I'm not sure about surgery, but... All right, well, you have, you have the doctor on staff, so we're going to see how this rolls. Uh, minus 40, but he also has a badass place, so... Minus 20? Yeah, the, the tent and the equipment are probably actually good here. Yep. Of course, he's actually a good oh. surgeon. Watch him fail. Two! He beats it. All right. So he's managing to <clears> stitch, <throat> uh, managing to, like, reset the arm, make sure everything's good. He has it, like, plastered up. And while this is going on, uh, the Sister of Battle walks in, and you watch as still heavily, heavily sedated. Uh, the, uh, the surgeon goes, we're in the middle of a surgery, and the sister of battle just yanks the sergeant off the table. And he's like, he's still trying to figure out how to talk, trying to figure out how to walk, but he's, he's okay, he's able to respond. The sister of battle goes, Staff Sergeant Jones. Yeah. Yes, Staff Sergeant Jones he proceeds to read off a 19-digit identifier code. He goes, "Are you are you the uh, warden of one? Let's see, sanctioned psyker Scipio." Yeah, is he naked again? I keep trying to clothe that boy, and he just will not keep his clothes on. He just won't do it. Meredith just sort of looks at him. Right, no, bigger problems. Have you seen his foci? And if not, is there a reason you haven't remedied our current situation through violent and immediate ends? Ah, uh, no, he was naked. I'm pretty sure he has his foci, though. Uh, looks like a chess piece. About yay big. Very fond of it. And uh, now I have to do a whole bunch of contested rolls, which I don't have any of the stats for. So we are going to do uh, scrutiny versus deceit on the part of the sergeant. So, Scipio, since this is your life on the line, roll me 1d100. Your target number is 59. Let's do it. Not good. Ooh, not good. And I'm going to roll for the Sister of Battle, who... Does not have a great... Right, she's supposed to be someone who beats people off, not someone who investigates. Yeah, she is not a commissar. Uh, I don't think she has scrutiny trained. So, she's going to be against her fellowship. So, 1d100 plus 20. So she doesn't have it trained. And her target would be 30. Wow. That's wow, terrible. actually feels harder than that, Sergeant. As hard as she possibly could. How would you like to explain this? She is... I'm going to say, between him slurring his words and her being too busy to bother, <clears throat> she is trying to... Uh, she is leading the argument, actually. She is looking for what she wants to see. It's like, chess piece. So he has it. So you know he has it somewhere. <clears throat> no, he has chess Direction. pieces. Yeah. Uh, last I saw it was in the officer quarter. Last one. Southwestern tent. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to come with you. It's fine. It's fine. He's like, it's right over there. Right over this way. And he goes, uh, so I, I heard that they weld you into those suits. Is that, and she just sort of looks back. I'm going to just, I'm going to just be quiet. I'm just going to be quiet. It's fine. It's just a real on. I'm a huge fan. The sisters of battle. You're all, all right. I'll, yeah. Okay. She just doesn't respond to him at all as he walks in and, uh, he looks around and he goes like, yep, yeah, found it. Roll me one D 100 real quick. Let's see it. And uh, see if you can get under mine. No. He he, uh, he looks around and he goes, yeah, no, got it right here. Uh, he loves he loves that little horsey. And he, just, he reaches out and he grabs 
one of the horsies. He goes, it's a night. It's like, no, nah, it's midday at least. And then he leads back out. And as, uh, as they get back, he goes, uh, Scipio, I don't want you to know. And you can see that like the uh, the effects of the anesthesia are really starting to like weigh on him. Excuse me. Excuse me, I found you in a pony. The pony in a pony, Skippy. And he walks oh. up and he... And he just he just slams it right on your chest, causing you to just go. Ah! And now what I'm gonna do now? And you know me. Good Hey, and he just sort of lays down next to you. Yeah, I'll I'll just like look at him and just uh, like stare at him. Try reaching for a shoulder real quick, just pads like you. I mean, you're you're basically in traction, so. Oh um, yeah, I can barely do it, so I'm just like wiggle like a finger just, at him. Just. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Sergeant. So, while this is going on, the uh, the priest looks at all of this and goes, "I'm gonna roll something real quick." Lucky! Wow. So he looks at it and goes, Sister Meredith, if I recall, the sergeant is still technically on duty once he was relieved from the hospital, correct? Sister Battle nods. Currently he's unconscious, correct? She nods. He walks over and he sort of takes his giant war hammer up and he brings it down he sets it next to the sergeant as he picks the sergeant up and tosses him into the bed next to Scipio and he goes if the commissar comes by advise him that I am currently tending to the wounded in here but let no one else come in or out without my authority just because this psyker has his foci doesn't mean he is allowed to go wandering around in his condition and for a moment, you think he means your level of injury, but then you mean without someone immediately behind you ready to kill you in case something happens. Right. But I'll probably play into the former and uh, just probably lightly say, don't think I'll be walking anywhere for a bit. <laughs> As if I don't understand. Do you, do you mind if I ask how it is you came to pick this as a foci? One moment. Yeah, sure, I'm just sitting here for no reason, it's fine. I had someone coming up. Ooh! <laughs> uh, so, he asks the question. Scipio, like, stops and thinks for a little bit. <clears throat> I suppose my humbling experience these past couple of days indicates why. The knight needs nothing else. The horse can go fly free. Even without my las gun or shirt, I help my squad. Roll deception. All I need is it. <laughs> yep, this is deceptions. Let's see. Do 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 do. Fellowship, not trained. Uh, and I don't suppose I get anything, but it's still against him. So. Uh, technically, I'll give you a bonus of fifteen because you are, you did get a big setup from your sergeant. Mm -hmm. So he. He's not necessarily believing that you did this wrong. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, chess players, every chess player who watches is like, right, the horsey is no support needed. Horsey runs free. Idiot. Yes. <laughs> I'm You're just not... making up a good story. <laughs> uh, only minus 3.1. That was a reasonably good roll. That is a reasonably Versus, good uh... roll. Oh, well, did that? The only Zero issue minus thirty one. Okay. The only issue you will have with this is that wait. Is that right? Minus... Was your target I... number zero? Uh good question. My fellowship is twenty five and I'm not trained. What's the penalty for not being so, trained? So twenty. Yeah, it's so you like should, 25. You should... Yeah, so you should have you should have only oh, what, one oh, maybe degree it's because I added plus fifteen and not subtract uh, yeah. twenty. Yeah, right. Just it's add the nomenclature difference. There you go. So, so otherwise, it's gonna fuck everything up. So roll again. 
Uh, but don't okay. don't don't add plus. I mean, just recalculate what the target number was, right? It's like half no. and then plus fifteen. No, nope, you're gonna have to roll again. Okay. Awareness. Uh, minus twenty this time. Well, you have a fifteen point bonus, so. Did that actually be... mess it up even further? Uh, no, right, that so did it, that did it right. You just don't have the numbers right. So we'll say you got a thirty. So instead of negative eight, you have negative seven. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll just roll with that scrutiny. Sure. He gets no bonuses to it. Ah, he fails, but not by as much. So he looks at you and he goes, right. You know that that's not how the night works. I have not found a single person who's willing to play chess with me in over 10 years. Oh, okay. Well, these aren't good for him either. That is not a lie. <laughs> so, uh, he looks at you and he goes, As a rule, lying to a chaplain or any member of the ecclesiarchy is not ideal. I'm aware of my reputation, and it's well-deserved. And as much as I loathe the necessity of your existence and the existence of those like you, the simple fact is that you provide a vital resource to the Imperium, to the battlefield. I don't hate your kind. I am just disgusted by the necessity of your existence. An odd, odd by the daily struggles you must have to force and face on your lonesome. The only solace I can offer you is a swift death. So I offer it freely and without hesitation. That being said, if you are having concerns, you can come to me. And I will help you in any way I can. You have to face the tribulations of the warp on your own. You do not have to face the trials and the horrors of regular old human life on your own. We're chaplains. We're here for a purpose. And more than one. So that being said, I'm going to sit here and wait with you until your sergeant is back, fully functional, fully capable. And then we're going to make sure that you're not a threat to the rest of the troopers that are relying on you. And I'm sure that in the event you prove that you aren't capable of maintaining yourself, you would want me to do the right thing. Scatter your skull and the contents therein across this horrid earth. I suppose that is about as generous of an offer as I could hope, isn't it? It'll be mostly painless. But if I can prove myself to you and others, then in this case, well, maybe I'll come by and we can play a bit of chess sometime. Oh, God, no, I hate that sport. It's oh, terrible. No. Everyone Thank who you. plays it is so pretentious. <laughs> Save you just groans, Ken. Oh, I suppose I'll break out the checkerboard then. It has, a, it has two sides. I prefer trivia based on scripture. So you're just groaning in pain. <laughs> but yeah, that so his response. <laughs> that, that uh, he sort of sits down right next to you, and you notice that he keeps the warhammer on his shoulder, and you also realize that he could just shrug that off and have it land right on you. Well, yeah, definitely. But while this is going on. Uh, you guys settle in for a very quiet, rather lonely night. And we're going to fast forward a few weeks if there's anything y'all would like to do in the interim as you recover. Oh, that's right. Arms Bionica. All right, so yeah, you, are, arm time. <laughs> you are being put in. To get yourself bionic arms. So. 1D100. Actually. Before this gets started. 
Alexander, you've mostly recovered your wounds. You still are critically injured. But while you are sort of hanging out in the department, so Munitorum, doing what you need to do, uh, you notice that one of the Rattlings is completely gone, and the other Rattling is almost constantly intoxicated. It's, it's not a good se- scene down here at the Department of Munitorum. But while you're down there, you do get a runner who uh, runs up to you and goes, Um, is there an engine seer, Alexander? Um, and he looks directly at you as the only engine seer around. He goes, Yes, thank you. Uh, I have a letter uh, somewhere here. And he sort of pats himself down. And he goes, Oh, it was, it was very important. Hold on a second. He goes through everything really quick. And uh, as he's as he's going through it, he goes, Right, so, uh, here we are. It is from the main commander of something known as an Aegis. The Aegis? Hmm. Aegis of Gildan. Does that sound familiar? Aegis of Gildan. I'm not familiar with that rank, actually. At any rate, here you are, sir. And he hands over this uh, pretty pretty standard uh, missive, still in an envelope. Oh, sweet. He takes the hundred chits and says, oh, thank you very much. Um, a few hundred more chits and I can get a beer. Thank you. And, uh, he nearly sprints off and runs off away. And as you as you open it, uh, you open the envelope. You take it out. It's this tiny little scroll. And as you unroll it, it just, just microfilms all the way out. And as you are reading it, it's addressed specifically to you. And uh, as you're reading it, it specifies to Engine Seer Alexander. Thank you so much for your efforts, both at the Department of Munitorum and in the field. Your bravery and technical skill set was priceless in the recovery of the Aegis of Gildan and the completion of its mission. While it is unlikely that any greenskin force of any size would have been able to deal serious damage to the Aegis, your efforts selfless and competent, efficient and brave, have continued to ensure that we met our guidelines and accomplished our duties in a timely manner, for which we are extending the opportunity for you to officially become the assigned engine seer for the Aegis of Gildan. Upon your acceptance, you'll be transferred out of your current regiment and be assigned directly to our command. P.S. The chandelier is functioning perfectly. P.P.S. You currently do not have the current upgrades befitting someone of your station, so we are going to put you in for multiple cybernetic upgrades should you accept this position. Please return this missive with your name, seal, and your acceptance and or refusal post haste. Regards. And that's where it signs off. It's around this time that... Write a uh, letter. Yeah. It's around this time that uh, Sergeant Jones comes back and goes, All right, well, looks like we're going to be able to get you those arms, son. Uh, can't speak to the quality just yet, but... Well, well done. We're happy to have you in the regiment. We couldn't have done it without you. Oh, yeah. You'd become a new sergeant, presumably. Decisions, decisions. Not every Alexander has succeeded more than any other character. (laughs) But yeah, so this is uh, not everyone leaves a regiment because of injury or death. Sometimes they move on to 
bigger and better, more distant things. So, if you would like to accept this offer, you will become an NPC that may or may not arrive in the future. Or you could continue on getting your upgrades and hanging out with the regiment. Uh, Staff Sergeant Jones does say, as he comes in, he goes, now, don't tell the rest about this, but uh, well, you're all liable to get medals, assuming Scipio doesn't get his brain bashed in at the end of the week. Still hoping. Apparently, General Matisse uh, led a charge across an uh, orc-infested territory to relieve beleaguered commanders on the Forlorn Hope, to which you all were integral to the success of. Namely, we're going to put you in for a uh, was it a Hephaestus Meritorious Cog, some other tech priest bullshit? Basically, all you little tech priest agency or buddies are going to recognize that because of you, one of the eternal engines of mankind's never-ending war gets to carry on for another day. And the other ones get some other bullshit medals as well that we all find very impressive, but I'm sure you do not. But, uh... The least I can do, you have performed admirably. And the next time you square up against Private Jort, I imagine you're going to be able to crush his head like a tin can. Uh, Jort will likely get multiple medals, yes. Actually, most of you are liable to get multiple medals. You just haven't seen... The uh, sheet that was submitted. Sure, this is also the first time one of our sergeants has lived through something. This is true. Uh, who was the first sergeant? I forget. The the first sergeant was, was uh, Ark's character, Laszlo. That's right! <laughs> oh, sergeant we... Laszlo, who single-handedly fought an orc and then died via rocket sniper. <laughs> rocket sniper! Yeah, uh, I believe George still carries a fractured tibia of... Yeah, I have oh, your man. leg. Oh yeah, and and the one after was me, and of course, you yeah, know, I died before I could even do it. <laughs> yeah, this is the first sergeant to have survived briefly. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Griff did promise medals and then get executed. Don't have to keep my promises. I'm dead. <laughs> Classic Griff. Declining the promotion. They can't kill me if I'm already dead. Bold move, Alexander. Ooh, let's see how it plays out, Cotton. All right, so... Uh, you decline this auspicious role for reasons that I presume are entirely uh, self-centered and understandable. But uh, you do get your arms. Roll me a D100, and let's figure out uh, how... Easy it is for you to get your bionics. All right, can someone read off what he got while I look at dozens and dozens of charts? Uh, 73. All right, that actually might be fine. Unless you'd like to use one of those fates you never use to re-roll. Just saying. Two oh four. Yeah, if you want to burn it to reroll, I'll even give you a uh, an additional plus fifteen because you're burning it for the roll. So, I believe you added plus fifteen. So that's eighty eight, which is a little bit worse. But because you have the 15-point bonus, it's the same. <laughs> but hey, good use of a fate point with the additional 15-point well, bonus, like a 15-point bonus to the roll, not to. Yeah, I understand the confusion. All right, the good news is Bionic you literally got the same fucking thing. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So. Uh, the good news is, I'm going to have you roll me 1d2, the higher the better. <laughs> One. So, you managed to get yourself 
two bionic arms. Well done. One of which is of good quality. The other is of poor quality. You can decide which one goes where. Potentially, you could upgrade them over time. All right, so you managed to get one bionic arm that on the right, which is in in the style of your your preference, it is this sleek metal. Uh, it looks human, but almost like skeletal, but it is large and has enough weight for you to actually be able to like pull and manipulate things. It's actually surprisingly dexterous, and as a result of the fine-tuning, you have a plus 10-point bonus on agility tests requiring de delicate manipulation. So, in the event I make you pull out a like fuse of a nuclear bomb or something, remind me of that, and I'll allow you to have a plus 10 to it. In the meantime, your right arm, on the other hand, uh, sort of looks like one of those mechanical claws. It's large, it's bulky, it doesn't really have hands, it's just clamps. So, if you can imagine uh, the character clamps from Futurama, that is very much what your left arm looks like. <laughs> but hey, you have a clamp. But they settle in. And as you go in there, they're looking at your arms and they're looking at the sheet and they're going, the, the, the surgeon goes, now, I can't see anything wrong with these arms. Is this? Nurse, if you'd be a dear, could you please confirm that we're here to put bionic arms on this tech priest? And the nurse comes back and goes, doctor, that's what it says. I don't know what you want. It's a fucking cog boy. They do this shit all the time. Doctor goes, right, orders are orders. Um, be dear and get the bone saw. The large one. And she comes back with this massive bone saw and they just start... <laughs> that's what it sounds like when you saw through bone with the bone saw. <laughs> like Donald Duck that's constipated. Yeah, Daffy Duck. <laughs> like Donald Duck. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. It's actually a very really good voice. Very good impression. <laughs> so there you go. As they saw through your arms and managed to install bionic arms into your wonderful form. I've never been so proud. Got it. So, there is that. As you guys are in recovery... <laughs> Excellent, excellent gif. Well done, Taylor. <laughs> so, while uh, while our good good friend, the engine seer Alexander, is in recovery, the rest of you are sort of dragged out to bear witness to the test, uh, namely the testing of your Psyker Scipio. Uh, you notice that Commissar Hartley and Commissar Saint Pierre are there. Commissar Hartley does not look good. Half of his face is covered in bandages. He's, he's basically a walking bandage, but he still manages to get his uniform all right. And he goes, I, I know that this is a important thing for the ecclesiarchy, but uh, these witch trials are just so trying. If he's guilty, just shoot him in the head. It's the only fair way to do these things. And St. Pierre goes, yeah, well, that's what I did, like, a couple days ago to this medic. You could have seen it, like a ripe watermelon. To which Hartley looks back and goes, Yeah, no, I heard. It's disgusting. You're a horrible human being. You should be ashamed of yourself. But also, good shot. And <laughs> while they're discussing this, uh, they get everybody brought out to uh, to the main parade ground. They manage to give uh, Scipio an additional set of uniform. Uh, you notice that these are already kind of bloodstained. You're pretty sure they just got it off of a different corpse. Like, they don't want to ruin another uniform. Yeah, I was about to say, like, gee, I wonder if they're going to try saving a few uniforms here. <laughs> Laundry detergent, still not available in the future. Fair enough. And uh, you notice they set out some targets, and uh, the priest comes up to you and he goes, 
Scipion, if you would be so kind as to tell everyone gathered here what your speciality is in the psychic arts. Uh, just out of character. Uh, so as far as specialty, what should I actually say? Like what I have the most in or? Yeah, just whatever you're best at. Yeah. Um, I guess I would probably go ahead and say, <clears throat> as a psyker of the Empire, I would be classified first as a telekinetic. And what does that entail, your telekinesis? It means I get to throw objects at things and make other objects stop working. In the simplest terms. Fantastic. In front of me, you will find out, placed on the targets, a lantern. If you would be so kind as to turn it off from here. Using your foci. I believe it was the night. Or as you so eloquently referred to it, the horsey. That's correct. And uh, I, I assume they the kept it on me during this time, or are they returning to me now? Oh no, they had it. They, really it they kept this, it on. Yeah. They kept it on you because they mm -hmm. definitely do not want the psyker to not have their foci. Right. So now here comes a whole brand new set of rules of. So what does it take to do a power trick like that? That they are asking me to do. Mm -hmm. Well, effectively, it would just be the same, uh, the same, same thing that you had utilized before. Mm -hmm. So, okay, but it's a small radius, so you could do this at its lowest level. Okay, that should be easy enough. That is merely a challenging willpower test. And I believe, without your psyker focus, you no longer get those benefits. Correct. Right. Normally, I would get a plus 10 for having it, but the entire last session, I was without it. So I'm used to it now. Fantastic. Uh, so all I have to do then is successfully cast it. I have a, before modifications, a 46% chance. Uh, and they're asking me to basically fetter it here. Uh, yeah, also... Mm -hmm. Let's see if your sergeant can help you out at all as he looks at you and goes... Look, you've done this a dozen times, just like before, except you had the benefit of there not being a bunch of angry green skins shouting wah over and over again to distract you. Right. Just, it's much just, easier now. Do your trick. Turn the lights out. Let's go get a beer. Okay. So, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and roll willpower. And even though it's fettered, I will still get plus 10 for the amount of psychic power involved in this. You also get a plus 10 from the inspiration offered by your sergeant. He's so good to me. There we go. You really so an extra 20. Gee, I sure can't possibly fail. As you fail. Oh! One nice degree nice. success. It goes off. It will have a 2 meter radius, so basically just around the targets. That's fine. Uh, and then it has haywire field effect, which is technically random. All right, roll it. Let's see if okay. you can turn the lights off. So let's go ahead and hit a D10. That's a six. Let's go check out Haywire Field on page 170. Oh, yeah. Would you like to read it or would you like I have it up right now? Yeah, let's take a look. That would be a major disruption. Minus 20 penalty for objects. Actions utilizing technology. Uh, base movement to anyone. Power armor reduced to three. That is a very... Uh, it's not a dead zone, but it is a powerful haywire field effect. If that doesn't turn it off, a very basic lantern. Yeah, so as you as you do this, you see the light flicker out, sputter, and then dim, 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 and shut off. Perfect. And then gradually the light sputters back on. Yes. Fantastic. I understand you also have the capability to knock things over with your mind? That is correct. If you would be so kind, if you notice to the right of the lantern, you'll see a mock dummy of a green skin. And you realize it's just a bunch of scrambled, like, scrap parts that have been put together with, like, an angry orc face. I see clan. it. It's terrifying. Yes. Our artists leave little to be desired. So, if you could be so kind as to strike out. 
All right. Uh, easiest shot of my life incoming, then. Uh, Sergeant continues to inspire me, correct? He will continue to try. Okay. That's perfectly fine. And if he succeeds, he succeeds. He succeeds. So, uh, Assail is an easy power. It is plus 10. I have plus 10 because of my psychic powers. I have plus 10 because of the Sergeant. Uh, easiest shot of my life that I somehow miss. Alrighty then. The first miss out of all of this. Perhaps you're holding too much back. <sighs> Try to use more. Channel more of the warp. Very well. You've. It's been documented that you've been able to channel great sums, a great amount of warp energy into yourself. You should still be able to do so, correct? Indeed. Proceed. I will choose to do it only unfettered. Alrighty then. Uh, so only if I roll doubles. That is with six degrees of success. Yeah, you watch as you manage to blow apart the... Yeah, I pick up like a rock from the side and it just hits the target and then the entire target explodes, I suppose. Goes Perfect. flying back five meters. You see, uh, Commissar Hartley he goes, that should be everything, no? From what I understand, this was meant to be a uh, single test. And I have witnessed the single test and the single test was done. And then I witnessed the second test, which I was not told would be happening. And then I watched the second test be concluded. How many additional tests are there that we are unaware of that need to be passed before you're satisfied? The priest sort of looks at Commissar Hartley for a moment and goes, I suppose that will be sufficient. Staff Sergeant Jones, he's back under your employ and your supervision. Watch him closely. He's already demonstrated a penchant for misfortune. Hopefully that misfortune in the future only befalls himself and not those around him. Otherwise, it will most certainly befall you. That sergeant nods, snaps a salute. The, comp the, the chaplain goes, technically, you don't need to salute me. And then he's already leaving. <laughs> As you guys end up back in, mm -hmm. uh, you sort of end up going back. Except this time, instead of going back to your original, your original barracks, uh, you sort of brought away from the hospice into the one that Jort has been staying in. And uh, as this is going, he goes, all right, hang out here. I'll be back with the captain in about 10 minutes. He's going to want to have some words with you. Well, still not going anywhere. Fantastic. <sighs> Meanwhile, <laughs> all of you, actually, Jort, roll me 1d2. Actually, no, hold on. I'm just going to roll 1d5, and then I'm going to give you a number, because that's faster. So, Scipio, you are 1. Tabor, you are 2. Uh, Alexander, you are 3. And Big B is 4. 5 is funny. Which, of course, is 5. <laughs> no one notices anything. The funniest. All right. Oh, hey, look, there's York. <laughs> you guys are just hanging out, chilling. A few minutes later... Uh, the door opens up. <laughs> a few minutes later, the door uh, opens up, and you all, I imagine, jump to attention and the position of attention as the sergeant goes, Attention! Officer on the floor! Alexander, you don't need to salute because the sergeant has taken authority of your position. The Mechadendrite props up and salutes. No. <laughs> As this is going on, the uh, captain, Carlton DeWare, walks in and he looks around and goes, Gentlemen, it's a uh, pleasure to see you again. And you notice he too is sort of bandaged up from the fighting at the Forlorn Hope. I have a bit of bad news regarding our next assignments. I have had to bury 
or I should at least say watch the mass burial of a large number of our company. We're down to a platoon strength, which means that we're critically undermanned. Rather than have the regiment be broken up and sectioned off, we have been given one additional detail before the regiment is disbanded and rolled into other units. Apparently, Lord General Matisse's propaganda film was incredibly popular. And as such, the people of this planet have been clambering to meet the other heroes that were vital in the completion and the reconquering of territory so long held by the Orc Menace. The first retaking of territory since this war began. Now, while the entire platoon will be getting some R&R &R and receiving medals, I've been forced to select a handful that stood out above and beyond their peers. Quite frankly, there are few that stood up greater than you. Yes. Engines here, Alexander, I see the have been fitted for the new arms. It's fantastic. The civilians love to see our metal men in full regalia. Indeed. You've all been selected to receive some of the highest honors available for this current war front. You'll be receiving them in one week's time in front of a large congregation of the most powerful and influential members of the nearest ruling caste and city. As a result, you'll need to be fitted for dress uniforms, and you'll be stationed inside of the civilian area for several days preceding and following the award ceremonies. Now, this is the best reward I can give you, some R&R &R away from the fleet, or away from the battlefield. However, you are still Imperial Guardsmen, and you will still behave the part. So, uh, so, exactly, your normal outfit. He goes, now the sergeant, Sergeant Jones here, has been kind enough to give a list of all of your exploits, will be, which will be read out on planetary casters. Everyone in the plant, well, anyone with access to a screen, will be able to view you and your award ceremony. You'll also likely be given the opportunity to answer very brief questions from the planet's press corps. Remember that you have never had so great an honor as to fight and die for the glory of the Emperor and in the defense of this planet. You have your uplifting primers. I suggest you pick a few quotes from them. And when asked for anything specific, just fall back on the old standards. When in doubt, quote the uplifting primer. You literally cannot go wrong. If, on the other hand, you decide to answer things off the cuff, as it were, bear in mind that there are no amount of medals that will save you from the tunnel detail. So, enjoy your celebrity while it lasts. Hopefully, this war is in its final legs. And then uh, he takes a moment and goes... And clean your latrine. It smells awful in here. And he about faces and he leaves. <clears throat> Sorry, sir, I farted. Too many beans. All right, Jort, since you are so keen to open your goddamn mouth, you and your uh, comrade here, he hands you a mop. Go clean the goddamn latrines. The rest of you, good news is, we already have your measurements, so... We're going to assign you your dress uniform. You'll be shipping out to our main city here in just a few days' time. Pack up what you need. Say your goodbyes. With luck, by the time we get back, this war will be over, and you'll all be big goddamn heroes. And uh, with that, he shuts the door. He walks out. You guys are left to discuss, discuss amongst yourselves what your plans are. Well then, I suppose we're preparing study cards. 
I guess I oh, just yeah. uh, grab the mop and go, well, shaders are broke, and then go in there. Yeah, as you open the door, uh, you can find the source of the smell. In the far stall, you open it, you find the medic from earlier with a bed sheet tied into a noose just hanging there. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Roll me will the last remaining medic, eh? <laughs> Roll me willpower. Ten point penalty, bro. It's always Jort. Roll me 1d5. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what, what, what are you at now? Like 30? Uh, yeah, I'm at 30 now. <laughs> oh, hey, you just hit the threshold then. <laughs> uh, no, 40. 40 is the threshold. He's almost there. <laughs> but the good news is once he gets there, he basically gets immunity to some fear effects because of how crazy he is. He's like, I've seen this shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of shrug my shoulders and like push him to the side while I mop that stuff. <laughs> He's like, God damn it. He shit himself. And so you cut him down, drag him out, clean up the mess. And uh, the unit is down yet another medic. Which is not a good sign. <laughs> All right, with that, uh, everybody take a 10 minute bio break and we will hit the second half running. All right. All right. Second half.